All right, all right. Well, <laughs> all right. This time, this time, I, I had to do my, I had to do my little, my little spiritual rant. I hope you guys enjoy that. But now, now, let's get into the good, the bad, and the ugly of the news that you guys may or may not know. You know what I'm saying? Let's get into it. What's up, y'all? Lockout men. I am your host of Lockout Men Podcast. Welcome to this show. Yes, sir. I do appreciate you guys being here. That is what's up. If you like stuff like this and more, yo, if you like content like this and more, if you just like me and more, I, I appreciate if you guys like me. It's all good. It's all good. If you guys like it, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell for more content like this. Yes, sir. More content like this. Now, let's uh let's talk shop. <laughs> let us let us let us talk some shop for you today. All right. So, I don't know if you guys okay? I I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if you guys know about this little this little outbreak that's going on right now. That shut down that shut down damn near almost America. Little virus that spread just damn near across America that took a countless number of lives and changing the face of normal normality. There's no more there's no more congregations. There's no more there's no more nothing. We're all in this together. <laughs> ah, ah, well, let's start. Let's start with this little tidbit right here. First, I really got to get this out the way because I don't understand. I don't understand what happened and, and, and why. You know what I'm saying? Maybe this dude had bipolar depression or whatever the case, but he went. On a stabbing spree at a at a at a pilot trust stop in Tennessee. And in the rake of everything, he took three lives. Crazy. And unfortunately, it was a truck driver. Truck driver fatally stabbed three people and wounded another at a Tennessee trust stop, which was pilot. But the, share, the, the cops got there. He still had the bloody knife in his hand. Cops told him to put it down. Put it down. And uh, he didn't put it down, and they took him out. The motive for the rampage was unknown. You know, maybe he went in there, and maybe one of the female, one of the female uh, uh, cashiers kind of like got smart with him. I, I don't know. I don't know. But he went in there and he he fatally stabbed three females. I well, I, I can't even pronounce his name. So Idris, Idris, that's all up. Salam, Idris Salam, a 33 year old truck driver for Dome, North Carolina, was shot and killed after attacking four people in the pilot. Out of the four people, he killed three. Like I said before, the officers confronted him. He didn't want to drop the knife. And, uh, and yeah, they took him out. Let's go to, hold on right quick. Okay, let's start that over again. Let's, let's start that over again. All right, so, guys, as I was saying, this, uh, this, this guy, truck driver, I don't know what happened, but he, he just, I guess he went on a major meltdown. Here's the report from NBC News. Check it out. The crime scene stretched the length of a football field from inside this Knox County Pilot gas station to the Burger King across the street. Upon arrival, officers observed at least one person with stab wounds outside of the store. Responding officers found a man with a knife who refused to drop the weapon. At some point during the encounter, one of the officers fired shots, striking the individual. He was pronounced dead at the scene. Three women died with stab wounds inside the convenience store and in the parking lot. Pilot says all three killed were employees. In a statement, CEO Jimmy Haslam says the company is devastated. He says, quote, 
It is with heavy hearts that we extend our deepest sympathy to the families and loved ones of the victims. Rescue crews brought a fourth woman to the hospital. Pilot says she was a customer. What happened, B? What, what happened, dude? I, you know, I understand this, this pandemic changes people. Changes people for the worse. You know, sometimes it just brings out the worst in people. And this guy right here, uh, Islam, I, Islam, it, it, Salam, Salam. Brother man, 33 years old. What the hell happened? What made you, what, what made you snap like that, bro? Again, my, my heartfelt condolences goes out to the three women's family right there. That's, that's, uh, that's very, very, very unfortunate. And it's, it's beginning to be, you know, it's beginning to be a lot more crazy. It's, it's crazy, man. All right, so let's uh let's let's jump into let's jump into other news that you guys may or may not know. You know what I'm saying? This this virus is still doing the damn thing. So before I get into Las Vegas situation, let's jump over to uh there's an awful lot about this. Let's jump over no, that's to right, uh, Rick Harrison. Hold on, right quick now. Hold on, stop. I got to introduce you first. Damn it, man. Damn it, man. All right, so you guys know Las Vegas is shut down. The whole entire strip. There's plenty of videos on YouTube where people just going up and down the strip just to let you guys see how deserted it is. Like, back then, like, before the pandemic, it was all crazy. You know, people going about their days, people playing poker, people going to the casinos, people taking pictures in front of the world-famous uh, lost, welcome to Las Vegas sign. No more. It's only a few. Only a few. But Las Vegas is not playing, though. Las Vegas says, yo, businesses, we put in the effect that if you're not an essential business, you must close. We don't care what you do. But if you're not selling the essential needs of the people, then you can't be open, bruh. So what they did, they shipped out. They team of team of law enforcement and they went to a whole bunch of uh whole bunch of places and shut them down. One particular place is a pawn shop. Now <laughs> I was thinking to myself that Las Vegas has an abundance of pawn shops. And I can imagine why. They have an abundance of pawn shops. If you know, it it, it kind of reminds me that there is a pawn shop within earshot of a casino. There's you know Hollywood Casino over in Col uh, over in Columbus, Ohio. There's a pawn shop right across the street in the plaza. I never thought of that. I've never I never thought about that. Downtown Cleveland, where the Jack Cleveland Casino is, there is a pawn shop down on 13th Street. <laughs> In Las Vegas, there is a pawn shop just about on every corner. You know what I'm saying? Because people go, people go to Las Vegas and lose their clothes, literally. You know, they'll go there with, the, they'll go there with their checks and then they'll leave with their hearts in their hand. And in order to leave, they have to go to the pawn shop, pawn whatever they got so they can get on the bus and get back home. Rick Harris. Y'all know Rick Harris of the world famous silver and gold, uh, silver and gold, the star of Pawn Stars. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He weighs in on the pandemic. Here's the, here's the report. Now you can come in and talk. He knows an awful lot about this town. He also knows a lot about history. And based on what's inside this particular jewelry case here at Gold and Silver Pond, he also knows that right now, it's very important to have a good sense of humor. What did you do during the, you know, during the quarantine? Pawn Stars icon Rick Harrison trying to stay upbeat about a very bad situation. Normally 2,500 to 3,000 people a day coming in here um, this time of year. 
and if you look around, there's nobody here. And he also knows others in this community are hurting, and it will likely get worse before it gets better. That's why Gold and Silver Pond is trying to help. You know, we've lowered the interest rates and th uh, on, on items, and like uh, uh, we're giving people more time and everything to pick their stuff up. I mean, we understand, you know. I've been in this community for a long time. It's given a lot to me, and I always try and give back. Harrison says he's also noticed shoppers investing in a different form of currency. We have some silver in stock, but it's like uh, it, we get it in in the morning and we sell out by noon. Now, I like Rick. I like Rick. I am a huge fan of Pawn Stars. I mean, he's <laughs> some, <laughs> some people come into his shop with some wild stuff, and sometimes... He could be a little lowballish, you know what I'm saying? In the in the famous words of let me let me see if I can find in the famous words. Reward document. Why would you make a glass sword? Because I'm a bit of a nutcase. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you. I know a guy who knows a lot of stuff about old military stuff. Uh, let me give him a call. Let me see if I can get him down here today, and maybe we can do something. All right. I do know a girl who doesn't, and I wouldn't be able to purchase it until I talk to her. Have to have an expert check it out. Buddy that knows all about this stuff. I'll have him check it out. You know, maybe we can get a price together. <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> Always know a buddy. Yeah. Um, hmm. I, I don't know about this uh, sanitizer right here, but I do know a buddy that knows a lot about sanitizer and that could probably give me a proper price on what the low ball you at. They're bringing, they're bringing a buddy and yeah. See, the thing about, about them bringing in a buddy to give them an idea on what something is worth, never, never, ever, 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 ever think that the price that the expert says that is worth is the price that you're going to get. See, the expert values the, 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 the worth of the item is for Rick. You see what I'm saying? So if so, it's, let's just say you brought in, you, you brought in your item and you say, you know, he calls a buddy. Yo, I got to go and call my buddy. Okay, no problem. Dude, come in and say, yo, this is worth $5,000. And your eyes explode like, oh, hell yeah. I'm about to get $5,000 out this piece right here. No, 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 no. Five thousand dollars for Rick, meaning that he has to buy it from you at the grand old price of a thousand dollars. Okay, buddy, how much you looking for? Uh, I'm looking for what he said. Five thousand uh, dollars. That'll be a no. How much are you really looking for? I'm really looking for five thousand dollars. How about 2000 5000 How about let's split let's split the difference 2500 <laughs> See the 5000 is what Rick needs to get out of the item not you because if Rick buys that for $5000 he ain't going to make no money he ain't gonna make no profit off of it. He buys it from he buys it from you for a thousand dollars, sell it for five, that gives him a four thousand dollar profit. Think about that when you guys go into any pawn shop thinking that you guys is gonna try to make a come up. Now, with that out of the way, all right, with that out of the way, let's go to the 13 100 and 13 businesses in the ones that got suspended, let's go to that report and find out what happened to their pawn shops. COVID-19 crackdown happening in Las Vegas. A metro is shutting down businesses currently ignoring the governor's orders to close. And 13 investigative reporter Joe Bartels right now is live at Jones and Flamingo with a business well known to Channel 13 viewers. Joe. Yeah, Todd, the Nevada Coin Mart is closed. Las Vegas police and Clark County authorities showed up here over the weekend saying it is not an essential business and closed its doors. The owner, Neil, begs to differ. Now, hold up, y'all. Check this, check this guy out. Check, check this guy out. All right. Leave your comments in the comments below, but check this brother man out. 
The Nevada Coin Mart on the corner of Jones and Flamingo closed for business. Known for buying gold, silver, diamonds, Rolexes, and also costume jewelry. And when times get really tough, that's what a lot of people have because they're digging into everything they have to sell. Owner Neil Sackmary is a longtime KTNV advertiser and has made more than 2,000 paid appearances on the KTNV program, The Morning Blend. Neil says authorities came knocking over the weekend. They suspended my business license until April the 16th. As well, they uh, said that we had to close the doors immediately to the general public. Neil says it boils down to the types of businesses that are exempt from the governor's mandatory business shutdown and the types of licenses they have. Most people don't know the difference between a pawn shop and a secondhand dealer, so they naturally assume that a pawn shop is what we have. And so there is a pawn license and there is a second hand license. But are you and a pawn so shop? All though? that needs to be done, and we're not going to open until that point, that the governor would just say pawn shops and second hand dealers. Thank you for calling Max Pawn. This is Shauna. May I help you? Over at Max Pawn, they are allowed to stay open and business is booming. The industry is considered essential because it makes loans to customers. It was interesting, you know, the first week it, it kind of had a little steady flow of business and as of today it's like off the chart. I, can, I feel like people have now are into week two, paycheck isn't there, and people are really desperate. Telling you, Las Vegas ain't playing. <laughs> Las Vegas is not playing. If, yo, if you don't have nothing to do with essential products for people to, so they can continue their livelihood, then, brother, man, they, they shutting you down until April 16th, which is in a couple of weeks. Man, Las Vegas. Tell you, Las Vegas has, has, Las Vegas has changed the scenery. Now, as, as a couple of people said, including Rick, they, they kind of hoping that the economy will bounce back within, within six months. I'm looking towards a year because 2020 is already done. They, it's going to take the rest of this year to, to bounce back, to get to normalcy. But there is a new normal, though. You got, you got these TAs, these loves, these pilots. They all putting up plastic sneeze guards, cough guards, and all like that to protect their, to protect their employees. Uh, they got markings on the floor now that you can't go past, uh, go past this mark right here. There's no hand-to-hand -hand contact no more. They're putting your food and your credit card in like a little on the little tray and handing it to you so you can take it and take it off. Sad situation that's going on right now. Even sadder, even sadder over here at UPS. Wow. Mm, mm, mm. Now, you guys probably might want to start spraying down your packages because ain't no telling how this disease is spread. How is it spreading? Spreading. Darkness, y'all. Darkness spreading. I'm just saying. How, how is it spreading? However it is, it's getting everywhere. UPS confirmed workers' death tops measures to protect employees from the virus. How can you protect something that you can't see or understand or how is it spreading? Louisville, Kentucky, UPS Monday, this past Monday, acknowledged the death of an employee at his worldwide global shipping hub through, through the company, though the company declined to confirm many workers' suspicion that the man was infected with the Novo virus. The employee was a supervisor of, I mean, at the company's hub in Louisiana, I mean, Louisville, Muhammad Ali International Airport and died Saturday, according to multiple co-workers. An extended family member who insists on an anonymity because they don't want to get fired, told that the supervisor was diagnosed with the with the virus after developing breathing problems and being hospitalized late last month. Let's go to WDRB for the report. 
More now on that top story we told you about at the top of the hour, the death of a UPS employee. The worker was reportedly a ramp supervisor and died on Saturday. Those close to him tell WDRB he was hospitalized with symptoms of COVID-19. As WDRB's Jessica Bard tells us, other UPS workers are more concerned than ever about being exposed. UPS workers tell me they're anxious about safety on the job during this coronavirus pandemic. They say the company isn't doing enough to protect them from the virus and they're frustrated by the lack of communication. Workers say they want to know if someone working near them is quarantined. Other major companies in Louisville like GE Appliances, Ford and Humana have been clear about the number of employees who are quarantined or diagnosed with the virus. UPS has a policy of not confirming employee cases to other employees or the media. The company says it's going to great lengths to protect employees. Part of a statement to WDRB says UPS is not confirming employee cases because of medical privacy laws. But we continue to communicate often and regularly with our employees about the recommended behaviors to manage health risks. It's important that employees and the community understand the vital work that UPS is performing during the pandemic. I don't know. I understand the the policy, the medical policy and everything, but I want to know if somebody that I'm working close to that may or may not have, I mean, that may have it, I want to know. Yo, tell me. I need a bomb drop for that one. I want to know. Bump all that. Let me know. Who else in here that may have this? Because I may be working side by side to this person. So, yeah, let me know. I, I got to know. But again, how, like I said before, how can we find out about this thing? It's an invisible threat. Everybody's freaking out on how this, on, on how this is spreading. Now we got to wear face masks. We got to wear gloves. We got to, in a minute, we might have to be wearing Breaking Bad hazmat suits. I'm telling you, we might have to end up wearing hazmat suits, y'all. Something to think about. Yo, let's, uh, let's, let's, <laughs> Well, look at here, truck drivers. All I just want you guys to be as safe as, as, as you possibly, possibly can. Because, of course, I know you guys say the same thing, and it's also the, 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 same, the same thing is said all the time that, you know, once, once we shut down, the America America stops. So salute to every truck driver out there, including myself, that's braving the that's braving this pandemic to make sure that you guys have what you need. Because unfortunately, our homes is right here. And we eventually have to come in contact with people. I dropped, you know, I, I dropped my I dropped my load today and they told me that they, they, they told me to put the paperwork in the back of the truck. They'll sign it and then they'll put it back in the back of the truck so that we wouldn't have to go in. And I think that's I think that's the case for all of us now. You know, how we used to go in, go up to the window, sign off all our paperwork, yada, yada, yada. But now, mm mm. They said, just put it on the back of the trailer. We'll get it. We'll sign it. And then, boom, you're good. So stay safe, drivers. All right. If you guys like content like this and more, please subscribe, like, comment, share, and hit that bell for more content like this. Along with that all button, I am your humble host, your news reporter, your guy, Lockout Men. And I, I would like to give you guys an update. Um, today, I'm not sure if if uh, a make the call video was released today, but today, 
Unfortunately, I have some I have some news for you guys that the make the call videos I will not be making calls uh unfortunately for you guys. Um I'm just letting you guys know that all the truck the all the trucking companies now they're looking for drivers. They need drivers. They're they're doing everything that they can to bring drivers on to make sure that the commodities is still being moved in this hectic pandemic right now. So if you guys need to know information about any company that you may be interested in, please call them and do your research because now they're, they, they going above and beyond of, of what they, what they actually offering now. You know, some companies is offering a little bit more for you guys to come out here and, and do the damn thing for them. They're offering more incentives. They're offering more pay. They're offering uh, they're offering more bonuses for you guys to come out. So just know that all companies out here now are looking for you. So if you're interested in going to any company, any company out here, Definitely give them a call of the ones that you are interested in. Make sure you talk to that recruiter and make sure that the information that that recruiter gives you is what you and that recruiter can, could work with. Okay? Just give them a chance because some companies won't give you a chance. But that company that do give you a chance, definitely work with that company. All right? So... But unfortunately, the make the calls MTC, the last call that was that was uh, that came out today will probably be the last call that I will make for you guys. Now, if you guys still want some advice, uh, if you guys still want some advice on uh, on on um, on these companies that you may be interested in, you still you can still feel free to hit me up in the email lockoutmenpodcast at gmail dot com. I can definitely talk to you that way, give you some you know, give you some advice if you like, or you can hit me up at the Instagram over in the DM, uh, or you could just hit me up in the comments and at you know ask your questions there. Uh, I will try my best to help you out in your decision making. But as far as as far as make the call video goes, uh, this morning call will be the last uh, the last call that I uh, that I make. So I'm I'm glad that you guys enjoy uh, the four seasons of make the call series that I did. Um, I am appreciative of all of the recruiters that I have talked to um I'm appreciative of all the all the all the um all the people that was interested and that that got on uh that got on with the companies because of the call videos um and again thank you very much for the support of of the call videos all right uh with that said I'm done you guys have a bless bless one May God bless everybody, all right? May God bless everybody. And on that note, we are gone.